it's Sagata Girl, and it is September 15th, and it is a beautiful day here in BC. Um, the sun has been out all day. It started off cool, but it's been beautiful fall day. I can't even believe how gorgeous it is. So um, I wanted to take a, just a really brief few minutes here just to give you an update um, with regards to my Lulu Lescott Tarot. I have to say that this deck, out of all the decks that I've purchased, um, especially in the last six months and last year, this one is really intriguing me. I'd like to say that I'm resonating with it, but I don't even know if that's the case. Um, I think this deck uh, kind of freaks me out a little bit. Well, maybe freaks out is a strange word, but or a strong word, but it kind of... Uh, Concern, concerns me. It disrupts me. It disrupts my insides. Um, I get a really visceral reaction to a lot of the cards. I haven't actually started reading it with, with it yet. I've only had it for about a week and I'm currently dedicated September to working with the journey through, of the Hidden Realms. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on, right, working with right now on a daily basis. But I've been carrying this deck around with me for the last week and looking at the pictures and have come to a couple of um, insights um, and I've been watching some of some other clips on on YouTube uh, Al Moon 513 and Rory Rants um, it's been very interesting so I just wanted to um, share some of my insight at this point um, about my initial feelings about the cards without even having used them for readings, okay? At this point, I'm just, I've just been looking at them, reading the little, the description in the little white book, um, and just trying to connect with the cards. So I will say that this is, I, I, in my opinion, this is not a deck for beginners. It would be a good transition deck to, for more intermediate readers. The symbolism has very little in common with the traditional rider weight symbolism. So... I think for me at this point, I, I like that about the deck. I'm I was looking for something different, um, and I really am resonating with the artwork as much as some of it does disturb me, and raises questions for me. Um, I really do like the symbols and the art that they've integrated. Um, the little white book, um, it's produced by the Scarabale. The deck is produced by the Scarabale, um, with. Ludi Lescott. I'm not sure whether that is a real uh, person or someone run, writing under a pen name. Ludi Lescott um, came up with the uh, meanings of the cards and the principal ideas behind the artwork. And then Patrizio Evangelisti did the art. Uh, this is an, this is the little white book. Okay, so it's pretty small. It looks thick, but it's only thick because the scare bale prints it in all four languages, okay? So, um, the write-ups, uh, there's a few different things in the deck, which I'll talk about more when I do an actual review. Right now, I just want to talk about my initial impressions, okay? So, um, the write-ups for each of the cards is very, um, poetic, and very ethereal and um, at times I, as a beginner not particularly helpful okay so I'll just show you an example so here's the death card so you can see that very minimal border okay um, it has the major kind of just has the Roman numeral so the description for this card is death you cannot choose when the body dies, but you can choose when your soul dies. And the answer is never. When you seek eternity in things of little value, you kill your soul. So, I'm not sure what that means. Well, I know what it means, but it's very different than the traditional meaning of death. So, it's interesting to go through the writing in the Little White Book. Um... Yeah, I mean, I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just, it adds a different spin. So again, you know, more of an intuitive type deck. All right. So I'm just going to go through, I just want to show you what is causing me 
this interesting feelings of what or oh my god that is going on with this deck so these are the cards that I just love these are these I mean there's lots but I picked just a few that I love so the death card okay the art is very um, I don't want to say dark. It has a somber feeling to it. It has a darker feeling to it. Two of Swords. Justice. I really like this card. It the 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 write up in the little white book talks about how the Louis Lescott tarot, um, this the it takes place or the storyline or where it was developed was in New Orleans, and it definitely has that New Orleansy what I would feel in the French Quarter of New Orleans. It it has that feel. I've never been to New Orleans. I would love to go to New Orleans if. I did go, this is what I would expect it to feel like. Okay. The star. This is probably one of the most RWS similar cards in the deck. The high priestess. Yeah. Again, so like just she looks a little she looks a little crazy there. I don't know, maybe high priestesses are meaning to be a little crazy. Just, you know, different. Queen of Swords, I think this is one of my favorite depictions of the Queen of Swords. I really like that she's not she doesn't have her shoes on. And she's got this sword on the on the ground and she's surrounded by leaves. Palms are up. I don't know, I just really like that image. One of my favorite images of the hangman. I love this. Is he getting tied up or is he getting let down? I don't know. Could go either way. And then I love this Ace of Cups. I love that the water looks like it's falling up. Okay? So you get a feel of the the art. It's a little bit darker, somber. Um, I quite like that. Okay? And then there are a smattering of cards. Now, I do want to, I should have said this at the beginning, but there is some nudity in this deck, some artistically portrayed nudity, um, and mostly, or all, women. Um, lots of very busty, beautiful, scantily clad women um, portrayed in what might be considered... Um, actually, I'm not going to say that because that's a bit of a judgment. Just very, it's a very sexual deck. Very sexual deck. To me, it seems like a very erotic deck as well. Um, so here are, here's a bit of the, of what I'm talking about with regards to the sexualness of the deck. Okay, so that's the Two of Cups. This is the devil. I actually quite like this devil card. Strength card. Again, I, I these the art is beautiful, and I you really get a sense of the primalness, especially in this card, the inner animal, animal instinct feeling. And then I really like this card. The Three of Cups. Okay, so you can you can see that there's quite a bit of cleavage, there's a little bit of nipple action, um, and there's there's a little bit more of where of that through the rest of the deck. Okay, and then there's a smattering of cards that are just they're just creepy. <laughs> they're just freak me out. So yeah, it's just I don't know. It, it's just this deck is just really. Yeah. Anyways, okay, so here's the lover's card. So, quite aggressive, perhaps not what we're used to, which, again, is totally cool. I'm all up for new ideas. And again, I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's just different. Like, quite aggressive, quite visceral, quite animalistic. A lot of the vampire culture is infused into these cards. Okay, here's another one, the Nine of Cups, which, um, yeah, like the woman back here, I don't know, I mean, 
maybe she's just sleeping. I don't know. It's just it's just interesting. Some very disturbing image. So here's probably like if you don't know what the three of swords means, you, <laughs> you know what it means when you see this card. Okay. Interesting depictions. And then these two, these are just creep me out. Like if you're not a big clown lover, this is not gonna help. So this is the six of cups. Hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Here's another one, the fool. Yeah. So just the write up on the fool. I met a mad and powerful spirit during my travels. I heard his music play for me. I continued along my path because I was not ready to lose myself forever. Isn't that interesting? He's got a chicken tied by his foot and he's got all these little mice following him I don't know so those are some of the cards that I find the most interesting in the deck of course there's more um, like I mean I can show you the art is beautiful like seriously so I I'm really entranced by this deck it makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, some of the cards that appear that are more violent, I'm, I'm, I'm like, well, is it really, is it violent? Is it just my impression that there is a violent act happening against this woman? Usually it's the woman. And if it is, how do I feel about that? And if it's not, like, why am I perceiving it that way? Or should I be perceiving it that way? Um, the sexual cards or the cards that are more sexual in nature, my first reaction was like, really, really, do you have to have that much nipple action or do you need to have that much cleavage or was that necessary? But the thing is, is as, as odd as it was for me, it completely fits with the whole um, energy of the deck. And so, again, I'm not, I mean, I'm definitely not a prude and I enjoy, I don't know if I enjoy, but I think it's important to get sort of pushed out of your comfort zone. So, But this is one of those decks that is, um, it's a real trigger for me, like even more so than like the Vampire Tarot by, by Ian Daniels that I have. It's very, um, it's, ener I mean the idea behind the vampire culture is there and so there has, it has that in common with this. But there's just something a little creepy about it, and um, and I I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm actually enjoying that it kind of shocks me a little bit. So, um, yeah, I'm not really. Um, it's just interesting. I have it's an interesting, very I get a very visceral response from the cards. Like I said, I haven't really been reading with them, but like this card, come on. Love this card. Five of Pentacle or pardon me, Five of Wands. Like it's draws you in and disturbs you at the same time. <laughs> so I haven't actually um started reading with this deck. I'm hoping to use it through October. Um I think it'd be a good time. It just seems like it would fit. It would be a good time to use it at that point. So um Anyways, that's just a brief little first impression. Don't get me wrong, I still carry it around with me and I'm looking at it every day and every time I look at it I think, holy crap, really forcing me to like expand my boundaries. Um, uh, I'm very drawn to it, more so than the vampire tarot and I know there's lots of, there's a whole vampire tarot following and I, I, I get it, like the vampire deck is beautiful, but this I don't know, it's just, there's just something about this deck that is really resonating with me yet, so it'll be interesting to see what happens when I start doing some readings. So if you have any thoughts or comments about this, please feel free to leave a comment um, below, and um, if you wanted to, you could email me at a fool's journey, um, 
tarot, no, a fool's journey 72 at gmail.com and let me know what your impressions are if you have any insights. Um, other than that, uh, many blessings. Have a wonderful rest of uh, your September day and hopefully I will be um, able to give you some more updates um, in the coming weeks. Thank you so much. Blessed be.